Welcome to Mind Pump, or the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. We meld them all together yeah. just for you. Uh, so listen, this is a Q&A episode. We call it a QA episode. And what we do uh, in this episode is answer questions asked by people who are watching and listening, just like you. Uh, but we open the episode with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We have some fun conversations. We talk about our sponsors. Today's intro portion uh, lasted 31 minutes. So if you want to fast forward to the fitness questions- You can always fast forward. Just 31 minutes later, all fitness. But if you want to hear us talk about other stuff- stick around and have fun. And have a lot of fun, start at the beginning. I'm going to give you a breakdown of what happened in this whole episode. So we open it up by talking about Justin's weekend- with his in-laws, uh, so we had a good time. Yeah, with all of his in-laws, and uh, apparently his in-laws uh, started using up all of Mind Pump's Organifi stock. They liked it that much mm-hmm. that they started taking all of our stuff. Now, Organifi is a company that we work with, so they do provide us with free products to to give to family members, um, and the products are all these organic uh, health products, like organic vegan protein powders. Green juices, which is their most popular product, I think. They have a red juice, great for pre-workout. It's uh, st- it's stimulant-free, so if you don't like caffeine but you do want a little bit of energy, you can try their red juice. They have a gold juice, which is excellent for relaxation and sleep. So about an hour before bed, you can mix it with warm almond milk. It's amazing. Um, anyhow, if you want to use the Mind Pump discount, here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, use the code Mind Pump, get 20% off all of their products. Then we talked about astaxanthin. This is a compound found in salmon and krill. Apparently, it helps the body deal with sun damage, which is great for Justin. Uh, Then we talked about the Pentagon essentially admitting that they found an alien spacecraft. Yeah. This was uh, in real news. Yeah. This wasn't like just made up. And it's not at the top of the news cycle. It just goes to show you how crazy 2020 is. Yeah. That led me to talk about a conspiracy theory uh, that some UFO hunters are they're looking at NASA pictures and they see this big cube coming out of the sun, bigger than Earth, 10 times bigger than Earth. Is it a spacecraft? Dude, what is happening? I don't know. Uh, then Adam talked about a company called uh, Silka. Um, you can actually buy their stock. Uh, it's a pink sheet, so it's a risky stock to get. Uh, but this company is providing luxury goods like Amazon, but securing them. This might be a good good company to watch out for. Then we talked about Kanye West losing his mind. Hmm. Uh, we talk about Canada's uh, sex guidelines, safe sex guidelines, which includes using, no joke, hmm. glory holes. What a fun fact. So. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Adam talked about somebody he knows who got COVID. They're much better, though. That's nice. And then I talked about how strip clubs are adjusting to the COVID area, uh, era, I should say. Then we got into answering the questions, okay? So that's 31 minutes later. Here's the first question. What's the best way to prime your legs before performing leg workouts? So priming is like way better than warming up. So how do you warm up, except better, before your leg workouts? Next question. This person says, you know, some people like Ben Greenfield argue that diets uh, that are high in glycemic index carbs are bad for burning fat. Other people say it doesn't matter. What's the deal? So we shed some light on that. The next question, this person says, you know, we talk a lot about periodizing your workouts and phasing your workouts. How do you do that with endurance type workouts? And how do you lift weights when you're an endurance focused athlete? And the final question, this person is asking a question about the mind pump business and they want to know if there were any hard compromises that we had to make, for example, allowing Adam to record every podcast with no pants on. Yeah. We've said, fine, we gave in to that. Um, also before the episode starts, there's only 72 hours left for the maps strong 50% off sale. Now map strong is a resistance training, strongman inspired workout program. Here's who it's for. It's for people who like to build muscle strength, who also want to increase their body's work capacity. People who want to be able to recover better. That's what strong men do when they train, they get their work capacity way up. So when they compete, they can do well. The program is also posterior chain or posterior chain focused. Not sure which way to say it, but you get the idea. Uh, it's your back, your butt, and your hamstrings. If those are areas you'd like to develop, you got to get this program. There's also non-conventional lifts in this program. There's conventional ones like squatting and pressing and rowing. Then there's non-conventional ones like snatch grip, high pulls, Farmer walks, circus press. So it's a really, really fun workout. It's actually one of the more popular programs we put out. 
um, in more recent times. And it's half off. You got three days left to take advantage of the sale. Here's how you get the, the discount. Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com. And use the code STRONG50. That's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Ooh. Ooh. That was aggressive. Some, some grit, yes. grit in there. <laughs> All right, we have uh, two winners for Apple Podcasts, one winner for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are Fit Byro and Liz G Zero. For Facebook, we have Ramona Maynard. All of you are winners in the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Now, for those of you that want to enter into that contest, we do it every single week, and you want to win a free T-shirt super easy. Here's what you do. You go on to Facebook or iTunes, leave a five-star review, write something really nice. Doug will go through, pick his favorite ones, and then you win a free limited edition Mind Pump T-shirt, okay? That's the only way to win a T-shirt is to leave one of those five-star reviews and make it interesting and heartfelt so Doug will pick it. Justin, how was your your family time? You had like, what, four or five days with the whole family? Yeah, it was Courtney's family, like pretty much her entire family. So, Oh, oh yeah. like who? Uh, like, so her brother and sister, actually one of her sisters didn't make it, but, um, basically everybody else and then their family with, uh, all the kids. So there was, um, four of their kids and then, you know, my kids. So six kids, 13 people in uh, total. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, so that was the most I've been. Do you, how do you get along with the family and everything? Do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, no, I enjoy them. Uh, and usually like, it's kind of, I don't know, like sometimes we only have like, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and, and then the birthdays and stuff where we usually hang out. So this was much nicer because it was like everybody was like relaxed and I was able to connect with them on another level, you know, where it's like, I, I don't know, it was different. It's when people are kind of like there just for like a formal occasion thing versus just like letting their hair down and chilling and giving me their real thoughts. So. You get to make them your, your special drinks? Oh, yeah. Your, yeah. your Moscow mules? And yeah, all that. mules. Actually, I started to get on a kick of making old fashioned. So I was trying to What's make in an old fashioned? Uh, it's kind of like a sugar, uh, sugary, <laughs> su sugary drink. Um, that was a slip there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so there's, I mean, I put it with brown sugar. I, I, I do some bitters and, um, uh, and, and then like orange peel and then um, basically like just an ice. It says for a splash of water, but I just do ice and let it melt a bit. What's, then, in, what's the main ingredient though? Whiskey. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, used yeah. it. Did you use Bourbon. all our, did you use all our oranges? Uh, what oranges? Uh, no, just one. The oranges at the house. Oh, yeah. there were a bunch of oranges. Those are our, our bongs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did try that one night. It's like totally old school. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, allegedly we uh, <laughs> allegedly. We, we made like a, a, a junior high bong. Uh, you mean a pipe? A, a yeah. citrus pipe. How the hell do you make a bong out of an orange? <laughs> <laughs> you mean a pipe? Yeah, I guess or it was you, a pipe. Or did yeah. you guys get like super technical <laughs> yeah. with yeah. that thing no, or whatever? We, we grabbed a, a, a vase, yeah. you know, yeah. and then stuffed it in there. Yeah. Now, wow. with with, uh, with uh, the family all there, now do you guys have this? Who, who in your guys' family? I feel like I have probably about an even split of the um, – you know, still really paranoid with COVID stuff going on. Or mm. is this the side of the family that's kind of like fuck it type attitude, or is there what you well, have some people still weary about it on your side? Yeah, it, well, so Courtney's parents are are aren't doing as well health wise. Like uh, her mom just like had some like uh, melanoma re removed that was cancerous, and so I mean we were just conscious of it from that level. But really, like her entire family is pretty much like pretty gangster about like not you know, worrying about masks and, and like all this other stuff that's uh, pretty much uh, the opposite of being scared. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. But are they, are they, are they, are they still, you know, they're doing all the things yeah. that, that you're supposed to do, but at the same time, it's, it's at a point, a breaking point. I think we all kind of are, are there right now. That's or, what I'm sensing with a lot of families. Yeah. A lot of families are like, all right, listen, we're not going to go out to a lot of social events and be around other people. Yeah. But we're going to socially as, distance. But as far part. as a family, the, we're going to family's still. only tight. Yeah. What is all, your, what's your family? What's the consensus with your family? Well, everybody's per, we're we're being very responsible. We're you know we're not we're isolating. Right? So one of my aunts is a registered dietitian. She works with people who um, need dialysis. Hmm. One of her patients, um, the first patient that she's worked, and she, remember when she goes to work, she's like full on medical protective gear, face shield, the whole deal, gloves. One of her patients tested positive for COVID, so now she's just 
not going to be around the family mm. for about two weeks mm -hmm. just to be, you know, because she knows she was side. around somebody with, with yeah. COVID. Right. Um, but my grandmother had a mini stroke uh, not that long ago. It was maybe like, I don't know, a month ago now. Mm -hmm. And before that, nobody was going to my grandparents' house in person. We were dropping off groceries at the front. We would say hi to them from the street. But my grandparents are, you know, eight, late 80s. Uh, you know, my grandfather's almost 90. And um, so everybody's being very careful. But then she had this kind of mini stroke, and she needs family to be there. So we're still very careful, but my mom and my aunts alternate when they go, and they're mm -hmm. very, very careful. But I said I said this in one of the past pod, uh, podcasts. I could see the health effects that that they that's happened to them from being uh, disconnected socially mm -hmm. from family. You could see that more obvious in I think older people. They need some of that. So there's always those unintended you know consequences. But everybody's pretty careful still. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're pretty mindful. And it was kind of funny because um, like my sister in law is a bit of a, a supplement uh, dork like you. Uh, oh, wonderful. And so, I'll probably like, like her. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, her. I, I was like, her. Uh, Yeah, I was like, oh, you know, you, you should really like pick Sal's brain a bit because she she saw in our in our pantry those like like fart gels that you made us uh, eat. The, oh, you know, the, yeah. Oh, there's like some of those there still? Or, or, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. No, uh, they're, they're uh, uh, glutathione. Glutathione. And, and, yeah. Gel, yes, that it literally literally tastes like a fart. It's would taste absolutely disgusting if you could imagine it. Yeah. yeah. So, but she was like, "Oh, I have some of this and all this," and so I, I started kind of introducing her to all of our brands and our sponsors and things. And we actually had like uh, we had some Organifi, so we had some Pure up there, and we had some green juice and stuff. And so she What'd tried. She loved it. She loved it. And I was like trying to. I was trying not to hype it up too much, you know, because she's been like on all these different types of things and does the green juice already and all this, but like she really preferred the taste of the the green juice that Organifi has. And uh, and I was trying to tell her that like, yes, it's it's a little bit on the pricier side. And like, this is why we, we attach ourselves to, to companies that are just promoting quality because I mean, her kids have certain issues and things that mm -hmm. she's all, all, always trying to solve. And uh, so she really appreciated, uh, you know, some of these brands that I was mentioning. Did to I her. tell you that uh, Katrina's mom gets all of her clients on Organifi Green Juice? Did you know? Does she really? Yeah, that's like, because it was such a game changer for her. And, I, you know, again, this is, we talk about this a lot, right? That, you know, if you're somebody who just has a hard time getting greens consistently in your diet, that it, it can make a huge difference, you know? And that's how I supplement and use it is I use it whenever I'm, not getting enough greens and I notice a difference when I do and when I don't. Mm -hmm. And I think that she was under consuming herself because it's been like this game changer for her. So now I, I, I keep hearing like, cause she keeps asking for the the link to the partner page and everything like that. Uh, cause yeah. and I'm like, what do you, I, you forget? She's like, no, I'm sharing it with somebody else. And so all of her clients, she's got uh, them all on, on green juice. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, sp speaking of, uh, of nutrition and diet, I've gone, I'm now going to do a stint of uh, ketogenic uh, myself. Oh, you're going keto. Yeah, because uh, one. I mean, here's the thing. When I've I've gone keto many many times. I definitely lose athletic performance. I get some strength loss, mm -hmm. but I do get mental sharpness, clarity, and I get this kind of uh, this, lower inflammation. Kind yeah, of I get this kind of elevated. Uh, I guess uh, cognitive feel for mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while, I like to jump into it uh, just to get that feeling. Um, and I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea to cycle your body in and out of different you know, fuel systems, if you will. So now I'm going to run off of ketones for a little while. And so I'm going to do the whole peace strip thing and see what's going. Did nice. She, now, is your sister-in-law the one that told you about astaxanthin? She is. So we were at the, um, we were at Donner Lake and uh, like, so I obviously am nice and pasty white uh, as usual. And um, they are too. So, uh, but she actually was looking a little bit darker than normal. We were like really commenting on it and stuff. And she was trying to tell me about this astaxanthin that, um, is, you know, from like flamingos and, and, and oh, it's, krill. It's like what have, gives them the pink color. It gives them the color. Yeah. And I, I guess it has some kind of uh, beneficial effect in terms of like being able to produce uh, protectant against the sun. I've never I, heard of this. Okay, so when Justin brought this up earlier, I did a little bit of reading, just short, about 10 minutes worth. And uh, it, it actually has been proven to uh, prevent, um, not totally block, but in somewhat prevent the damage mm -hmm. that your skin will get from. Is it uh, a pill or a cream or what is it? Well, yeah. you can get it in capsules. Um, so like krill oil would yeah. have astaxanthin, um, uh, wild 
salmon would have a, you know a decent amount of it but it does it does apparently protect the skin from from damage yeah it's it it was interesting to me and i was really like uh, intrigued by it because i mean we're spraying ourselves and here's the thing like i don't want to look like mark zuckerberg out there with like you know, oh, see just- a picture of him <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude like i don't i don't want all that zinc just blasting all over my face and my skin and just wearing clothes and everything and like like come on it's the dorkiest thing ever <laughs> you're like a vampire <laughs> yeah dude like <laughs> like, I, I'm not going to rock like myself at the beach like that. So uh, I was like, oh, interesting. I'm going to have to give it a try. I guess they were saying that they take it like a couple weeks uh, beforehand to really get it in their system. And then they've noticed like like a crazy difference with it. And if you're in the sun a really long, uh, just FYI, they still like use some sunblock, but not a lot. It's really reduced a lot of them, uh, the, the use of it. And like all those chemicals are constantly putting on themselves. I think, I think you'll probably notice more of an effect if you're super sensitive to the sun. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're yeah. probably going to, if like for me, I might notice a little, maybe, maybe sure. not. But someone like you who. Hey, all those ghosts out there. You well, know, didn't I, I didn't Doug you. chime in and say he's tried it? Do you? Yeah, did, yeah, I've tried it. I can't honestly say I've noticed a major difference. Mm. But uh, you, when you're so when you are in in, uh, in space and uh, Justin and Doug take their shirts off, you can see the reflection <laughs> a little bit from yeah. the <laughs> from the Earth. Yeah. So that's a, that's a uh, good I'm thing. I'm a beacon. <laughs> that's uh, a good thing, yeah. dude. Uh, I, Justin, I've been holding this in. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, I sent the Wait. article and then we oh, there, please tell me we're not going to go conspiracy theory. No, stuff. it's not a conspiracy theory. Oh, okay, okay. But it's making conspiracy theories. Oh, God. Here Dude. we go. Well, no, stop. Listen. Uh, I already know what you're going to say. This is crazy. Oh, no. Okay. So th- this is insane. The Pentagon oh, great. is about to release new information that they have on UFOs. Oh, and I a- saw that. Apparently, this, they This ma- is the Pentagon. Yes. I, I saw Joe Rogan posted about yeah. it. A- apparently, they actually said, there was a quote that said that they found vehicles- Not that, of this earth. Not of this world. This is the Pentagon. Now, how crazy is the, how crazy is 2020 that this comes out and it's not even the top yeah. of the news cycle? Right. You know what I'm saying? I've been telling people, like, they didn't say it. Did they really say that? I'm now, like, geez, they've, man, they've this- been holding out saying it's it's it's- you know, like like the, everybody shouldn't like think or believe in UFO for so long that it almost just feels like very convenient that all of a sudden now they're going to release this information to like simultaneously wow, like everybody's like up for being a uh, uh, tried for 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 the pedophilia stuff. Oh, is that what you think? It might be a distraction. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I can get on board with that conspiracy. Gil Saint Maxwell about to they they were about to publicize her uh, some of her private documents her flight logs which already there which is funny to me yeah where are we where where are we with that i thought that was supposed to be last week aren't we supposed to have already seen didn't she already turn it over no news yeah you can you can Uh, see for you can see the flight logs to i don't care about that i want all the other stuff that supposedly got released i don't don't know if they've i don't think they've actually let anything out yet no Uh, i mean there's there's some interesting stuff about the submarine uh like being underneath like this the submarine base is part of that island yeah they have a look into that they have a submarine uh, is that real i don't know that's why i said look into it (laughs) (laughs) apparently i don't don't want to spew misinformation apparently there's a submarine base at the island and then other prominent powerful figures own islands that are nearby why don't you just say joe biden owns well that was one of them okay as you say joe biden owns the island adam said i didn't say it yeah that's what i that's one is that now is that a conspiracy or is that true i don't know if it's true i don't know know can you google joe biden owns island his brother does though oh okay so <laughs> Justin does everything. Yeah, he wants. yeah, his brother does, and he he was part of the the, the signing with like releasing that over to somebody, really another politician. Well, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Okay, so that. he doesn't necessarily Look into own it, it. Man. I don't know. You know what? I think if you'd ask him, he'd be like, "I don't know." That's why. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Being uh, no, but I mean, okay. Besides all that, besides yeah, it maybe yeah, being a distraction along. or whatever, right? Crazy that the Pentagon said. Found vehicles out, uh, not of this world. Uh, that's okay. fa- it's, it's crazy. Yeah, this fact check, this is on Reuters, does not own an island okay. in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So I guess it's yeah, not Yeah, but true. who's behind Reuters? No, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Reuters. Reuters? Is it Reuters or Reuters? Reuters. It is? Sorry about that, Doug. No uh, problem. But anyway, bro, the, the Pentagon's saying that there's freaking alien spacecraft. Why isn't everybody losing their shit over this? Yeah. 
This is crazy. Because there's, there's too much other things. As I say, there's too much just, stuff going on. It no, doesn't make sense. Okay, well, check this out. I just read another article today. that So there's a... a there's like NASA, everybody stops what they're doing. Aliens! Yeah, so NASA photos. So you can go online, apparently, and, and really study... NASA photos and and so this is what like alien hunters do all day, right? They go on yeah. and they study videos of the Mars, you know, Mars and space and the moon and sun. Well, apparently UFO hunters have seen NASA photos, they're sharing them now, of a a that they're, they're calling an alien cube ship. So it's a dark spot on the moon. No way. It's I'm looking at the picture right now. It's a dark spot on the moon, but it's a perfect cube, which is weird because if there's spots on the sun, they're not cube and they're saying that this is an alien cube ship now the size of this thing 10 times bigger than the earth dude are we gonna have an independence what? day yeah and they're saying that it yeah. exited the sun so it came out of the core out of the sun <laughs> yeah, dude. what is happening yeah, dude. <laughs> i love this stuff dude, oh my god this hey, is literally like a movie yeah how mean, cr- meanwhile rad was released on apple tv this oh, last, god. This thank you week. bring us back i know dude oh, that was super hey why do you gotta hate on it so bad Stupid. it's a classic yeah i haven't seen it it's right. a, yeah. i should watch it before yeah I... it's, it's a classic send me an angel I, 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 yes i i I did want to bring up though, uh, so a uh, stock to watch. I get people asking me all the time about stocks now, and I am just, I'm not the person you should be asking. I just want to put, I just want to put that disclaimer out. But I am very curious about this penny stock right now called CLK. I was reading CILK. No, oh, CLK. Yeah, right. CKL, CLKA, right? And it's a, it's a company that has formed that is supposed to be a safe place for you to purchase luxury type stuff online. So, Amazon, we all know, has become like the top of the funnel for buying things uh, and having it shipped to your house yeah. overnight, yada, yada. But what they don't do is they don't specialize in like really high-end stuff like jewelry, like Rolexes, like Louis Vuitton purses, things like that. That's stuff that people still go into stores and purchase. And with COVID right now and nobody being able to do that, there's still a demand for people that are str- trying to make these purchases but are struggling to find a safe place to be able to buy now, them. Is it because people are worried of the spending that much online, whether they're going to get the product, where it's going to, like, it's just, just the security about yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, you you spend $20,000 on a Rolex watch, you'd be pretty scared to probably have that shipped to you without, like, you <laughs> Wait know. for the mail. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a- that's I don't a, know. Wayfair selling $20,000 filing oh, cabinets. Oh, Bing. snap. Sorry, Adam. I couldn't even get away from <laughs> the conspiracy <laughs> theories. So oh, my God. I tried. So Sorry. I'm, but so anyway, keep going. So, so yeah. yeah, no, I just, I, I think it's only, it's like uh, 89 cents or something like that. So, it's not like a- this is not me telling you to go dump all your investment in there or anything like that. It's a risky stock. It's a penny stock, right? It's a, or what the pink slip, whatever they call them at this point. But I just think that that's very interesting being a consumer who has looked for products like that online. And right now, if you're somebody who's buying stuff like that, it's it's hard to find. You can't, a lot of these stores are closed. That's I didn't yeah. even consider that. And when you told me that, uh, I think it was like last week or whatever, mm-hmm. that's, that is very interesting. Um, that is very interesting because you're right. There's, there's still a market for it. Right. But if you can't go to a place to buy it, you're right. How do you buy it? Yeah, how do you do it? What, yeah. do you, what do you do? Do you have to, what would you normally do before? Would You'd you have, have to go hire, in. You'd have to go in. You'd go in. Now, do they have like security measures? And, and So that's the idea is that this company, I think, is is bonded and backed and insured to protect that. So if I did order a $20,000 Rolex and it gets lost in the mail or what that, I think that the, the they lost. have- Lost. Yeah, they have, yeah <laughs> they have things in place to protect you for that. Just an interesting buy for me. I'm, it's, uh, you know, all I'm saying, watch it. It's, a, it's, it's very, very cheap right now. It's an interesting theory to me. I also, you know, you sent over the articles on, uh, would you, would, what's the economic uh, term? Stagflation. Yes, stagflation for what we currently are. Uh, what they're fearing is going to happen. Yeah, oh, what yeah. we may be happening right now. And, and assets, hard assets and, and luxury type items like Rolex watches and goods that tend to hold their value and even appreciate. I still see people purchasing and buying things like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Just my theory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of wealthy Courtney's people. Courtney's going to be excited about that. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, buy me all these jewelry. Yeah. So speaking of wealthy people, you guys watching the, the Kanye meltdown? Oh, man. So wait a second. What, now, what's happening? Now, now I heard that too. Was a, uh, So that clip that's going viral right now of him 
is just a small piece of that whole that whole talk. Well, now yeah. apparently he's been tweeting about his in laws, and they're tweeting saying things like he needs help, and he's talking about how they want to take him to they want to take him away and, and lock him up. And well, uh, there's and, and he said apparently that he that they wanted to abort his daughter, and he said no, and he was crying about it. And right, it, there's like a little there's like some craziness going yeah, on. Yeah, it seems. And there was something else about like him hanging out with with another guy that he was getting all like jealous about and like wanted to like divorce her over and like it just got like this crazy drama. Could you imagine you guys if the Kardashians make it into the White House? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nobody can. That's just not a thing. Yeah, just, no, don't no, say thanks. that. The fact that it, the fact that it's even a possibility to me, would you... It, would nothing you, is unbelievable right now. Nothing. Yeah, you could true. say anything right now. We have a cube coming out of the sun. Yeah, and, and nobody cares. Towards us. <laughs> nobody cares that there's a cube spaceship about to come to Earth. You know what I mean? I feel like that's the only thing that would bring everybody together right now, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, aliens? Yeah. 100%. Like, oh, shit. 100%. Right, we'd know? forget about everything else right now, and everybody would be like... Yeah. All right, you know, Independence need, Day. Right let's away. be friends right now because we need to fight this, you know, cube <laughs> alienship. But so I guess yeah. I guess Kanye isolated himself somewhere, and then uh, his friend Justin Bieber came to visit him. Oh, I heard, yeah, and, and hang out with him. So interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know you've lost your shit There's when Justin a, Bieber comes there. Yeah, that's a good good pair to console you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In crazy yeah, in crazy news, I'm going to read to you some stuff from. Uh, so this is this is Canada's. Approved. Um, so the British Columbia Center for Disease Control's website has an entire section dedicated to sex education during the virus pandemic. So they're telling people like, this is what you can do, and this oh, is how you keep yes. safe. You ready for this? Yeah, please. Okay. In their recommendations, they actually suggest you ready for this. <laughs> I am not making this up. You can look this up. Hmm. They're suggesting glory holes as a safe technique to minimize virus spreading. No, during sex. they're not. Yes, what? it is. <laughs> it, it literally says, use barriers like walls, and then in parentheses, you know, example, glory holes, that allow for sexual contact but prevent close face-to-face -face contact. Wow. What a crazy world where they're recommending a glory hole as for safe sex. I've been waiting for the government to approve glory holes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yes. finally. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is in Canada? This is their official, like... You know, like here's some recommendations, and they literally said Canada's always ahead of the curve. Go, yeah. You know, glory holes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Literally. That is hilarious. Yeah, so hey, you know, I finally have uh, the first person that's connected to me that got COVID. When I we got back from Tahoe, uh, Katrina told me I didn't even know about it. She's like, "Guess what?" She's like, "My brother got COVID." And I'm like, "What?" So, and his symptoms, uh, he, he it was a bad flu. Like it was definitely bad. Um, he his, his uh, ex. So they have uh, his ex and him have a, a son together, my nephew, and he is I want to say uh, twelve. I want to say Nathaniel is. Mm. He and she was like, "You you need to go to the hospital and get tested because you, I'm not letting you see our son mm -hmm. until we know for sure it's not COVID." Okay, well that's that's smart. He had a fever in the whole thing. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. No, he had he had a fever, body aches. He was 102. Um, and yeah, he felt terrible. He felt like it was a terrible flu, and he said it was the worst body aches that he had ever had. Um, and he went in to go just to make sure he didn't have it, and he had it. So he's been quarantined. The I think they told him until August second he needs to stay quarantined. So, so are people like bringing him food and shit. Uh, I have no idea. We ain't, we ain't, I wasn't talking to him. I don't want to contract it through the phone or anything. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I stopped talking to him completely. Yeah, yeah don't even to FaceTime you. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't even return his text or anything. No right FaceTime. <laughs> but is he okay now? Yeah, he's okay. He's totally okay. And like I said, it's been a. It's been like this. The comical side of it in the family is literally of everybody on both sides. He has been the most paranoid, the most anal of the whole situation. So and he ends up getting. What's this? Mm. What are the suspicions? Like, how could he have gotten it? So okay, so he he has a job where. He, he's a tech guy and he goes and works for like big companies where he, uh, you know, gets all you, he's, we would call him, right? So if, if everything crashed, Doug can't figure out why we're not uploading programs, people can't log in. And we, we would call somebody like him and his company and they would come in and troubleshoot what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the web stuff, server shit, like that's what he does. And so he goes into homes and has to do that. But mm -hmm. I mean, I know he's masked up, gloved up, like when he does that. Now I know I also know he's dating right now, not to put him on his on front street with his new personal life and stuff. And he's got like a new girlfriend that he's talking to. And so when Has we, she gotten sick at all? 
I don't know. I don't know. Like mm. again, I told you, I'm not answering his phone. They got to use the so, glory, the glory hole. Yeah, yeah I'll man. definitely. Check, yeah, yeah I'll send him. A, I'll send him a letter in the mail to let him know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. We, nobody knows exactly uh, how he contracted it. Um, it but the, the the suspicions are either one through work or maybe this new girl that he's dating. She wasn't uh, doing anything, and she was a carrier mm-hmm. and gave it to him. I mean, that those are the only two likely possible. Nobody in our family was visiting with him around that time to have per, per, uh, potentially contracted it. Well, I know California is now we're number one. Yay. We have the most uh, cases apparently. Right now? In the country. Yeah. 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 I just heard that. So but we don't have the most, we're not even close to the most, death, uh, most deaths. Uh, uh, that was New York. And that's because they had a lot of these well, so care along, home facilities. Along these lines of COVID talk. So, uh, yeah. and I was literally just reading this before we got on the mic. So excuse that I'm not completely right on it, but I just came across an article that, so you guys know, know that like, MLB, so baseball, professional baseball, open back yeah, up, yeah. NBA, mm-hmm. like all these sports are starting to like, they figured out ways. Mm-hmm. And I guess COVID is run rampant through the Florida Marlins. Uh, like eight guys contracted it in the locker room already and it's spreading. So there's rumors that this shit's going to get shut right back down again. So, oh, wow. Uh, even though they did all these precautions to get it opened up and running again and no fans and all this weird Wasn't shit. Wasn't that the same, like in the NBA, like, uh, I don't know. I heard Florida had like a lot of cases popping up again around there. I don't know. That's I know, And I know that's where they're playing ball. They're playing yeah. ball over in Orlando area, right over by the old Dis- Disney World or whatever. Yeah. So that's like our, where all the NBA players are at. Right. Like that's Disney, where our boys yeah, over there Disney. right now. Didn't you see that he's over there practicing with a lot of them? So I, I know they're doing yep. that. Um, but I just came across this article right before we got on. And it sounds like it's starting to run rampant yeah. already through some of these teams. Wow. Dude, talk about like, so baseball already, you know, it's kind of like a slower paced game. Did you guys end up watching like, so the, there's two announcers and there's nothing but cardboard cutouts in the stands. <laughs> it is like the most painfully like awkward, boring did like, they really, did setting. They put, did they really put cardboard yeah. cutouts? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they were all over there. And they had a little bit of like, like crowd noise, like injected every now and then. Uh, that I noticed, but like I was just watching it out of like pure curiosity. Like, did it wh- suck? Yeah, yeah, it totally sucked. I mean, it was good that like the, I was watching people play and like they were, but it was just basically like watching a practice. I told you that 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 was my feeling when I watched those fights. I really think that was one of the best fight cards that I've seen, but the, it didn't have that feel to it because of the lack of the audience. You don't realize how big of an impact it's, that you has. don't. It's you don't. Huge. You don't think about it until you go through watching a great fight like that and you realize because I'm in my living room going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, you yeah, know, right. every great punch or oh my god, and thinking like, wait a second. Normally, you're listening to that come through the TV, getting the same reaction. So it's really interesting. You know what it reminds me of? Remember when you were in in grade school and like two guys would like, they, they, you know, tease each other or whatever. And if enough people just went, Ooh, do you hear what he said? Oh, oh, you'd start a fight. You talked yeah, about your mama. Yeah. You, you remember that? Talk about your mama. You could literally start. <laughs> oh, you let him say that? Yeah, you could literally start a fight just by the crowd making them feel like, oh god, it's I true. I gotta totally. get in a fight now. That's so true. it's that crowd energy. Yeah, you know, I wonder if they'd still have fights on, on hockey. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, without the crowd. Oh, of course they would. That's yeah, they still, still would. They're, yeah, they're yeah. still. Yeah. Although you know, it's, it's funny, part of the sport. Although that 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 is like really for the crowd to get the crowd behind and right. do that. So a lot. Of, that's like yeah. a strategy in hockey. You get behind two or three goals, especially when you're home. Yeah, and it's you like regain momentum. You send your enforcer out, and his job is to go start a fight to get the team riled what up. A to weird get the cr- sport. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. It, that is awesome. Yeah, all like, sports should be. They like They should that. include fights in all sports. Woven in there. Yeah, yeah. All sports should. They they try to talk. They talked about. Eliminating at one point. I'm so glad that got shut down because it is one of the coolest oh, parts no. about the sport. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, it, it's it, you know, it's it's not going to go away. You know, it's not going to go away. We're going to have this around for a long time, and it's interesting to see how it's yep. a, how it's it's starting to change. You know, certain aspects uh, of our life. I wonder how. I mean, sports are they going to take a huge? We still don't know what kind of hit they're going to take long term. Obviously, they've been shut down. Yeah. But are they going to notice less viewership or maybe more because people I know, are bored? Th- I go. I change yeah, my I mind. I change my mind every day. Right after watching that fight, I feel like, oh, it wasn't that great. But then you're so thirsty yeah. for competition. You still want it, right? You you're so thirsty and and you want competition so bad that you're mm-hmm. willing to watch it. So I have a feeling that's what we'll see. In fact, I don't know. 
Justin, I didn't get a chance. If you watched, you, I didn't watch. I'm curious of what the viewership was. I bet it was through the roof. Probably. Know, I'm sure it was. Yeah, everybody was like super pumped. Because like, especially if you're a fan and like your team's now finally playing. And so that like the, I was watching the Dodgers uh, and the Giants. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, uh, like peering into that a little well, bit. Well, you know, in Rome, one of the ways that they, this, you know, during the Roman uh, Empire, the one of the ways they would distract the populace from you know shit that was going on is they would have gladiators. Yeah, they'd yeah. have the uh, you know the games or the gladiator matches, and it did it distracted people from crazy stuff. So maybe we need like some sports. I know to get people We're to too pent up. Man. Yeah, to feel like they're a little. Speaking of pent up, talking about markets that are adjusting. Uh, I guess more and more strip clubs. Someone sent me these articles. <laughs> strip clubs are doing drive through. Shut. You're your coming face. in hot with the facts today. Dude, I just have to give you props. This is. These, I saw a picture of one, and it's literally like a tent. So it's like a big tent, and you drive through slowly with your car, or you stop depending. I don't know if you have to pay more. <laughs> And then outside they do the car, like hood dances. It's like no, they uh, don't jump on the car. It's like a uh, Vasona Park where you could cruise the Christmas lights and yeah. you could watch the Christmas. <laughs> Except it's not. <laughs> you, right? you, pay, you pay. You pay five dollars. Family friendly. You, yeah, yeah, you drive real slow through and you look at the Christmas well, lights. It's like well, the same so thing. I looked at this picture. Right, the strippers <laughs> are Lexus. So imagine I'm in, on your Lexus. Imagine I'm in my car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's fucked up too, right? You yeah. drive through with a nice car, you can get all the attention. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, <laughs> they know yeah. right away. Yeah. yeah. You know? But the, the 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 distance would be like from here to like where the table is right there. So what is that? Ten feet or whatever? Yeah. So the car's there, strippers are over there. Mm. There's a barrier, like a like looks like I don't know if that, that's to prevent people from jumping out of the cars or whatever. I don't know. Which yeah. how many times has that happened? I, I don't know. I guess that's happened I'm already. I'm guessing a few. The strippers do their thing, but when I saw this is based off a picture that I saw, by the way, so I don't know what the deal is. But the strippers all wore masks. Wow. So <laughs> you're literally looking at just the body. Mm. Boy, that takes how, it to a whole new objective. How you know, thirsty do level. you have to be that you drive do a drive through stripper that and that would work? I I, I tell know. you what though, what I'm that what's still crushing right now is those fans only pages right now. Dude. Oh, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah. How do you know they're fans. crushing? Oh, because you see them popping up everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I, I guess you're right. Yeah, they yeah. probably are if you see them pop up everywhere. Oh, no. Everywhere they're popping You see a bunch... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see a bunch of uh, influencers that are converting to that now. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if your fitness business is slowing down, but you got a lot of attention and eyes on you, you're... You, you always got to ask it's yourself... It's just a button away. Yeah. If, if, well, how will my kids think about the shit that I'm doing right now? You know what I mean? I know. That's what I got to think. But yeah, the, the 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 strip club things. I mean, look, look at a bit. Of, the market for strippers might change, and ugly strippers might get more work now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the mask, the mask. Yeah, they put the mask on. Yeah, if you can't I work a, out. If you can't be a cam girl. Yeah, you can just mask up. <laughs> it's yeah. So bad. Yeah. First question is from Dust Reed. What is the best way to prime your legs before performing leg workouts? Mm. Okay, so um, so here's the the here are the benefits of priming, or why priming is so much better than just warming up. So a warm up aims to prevent injury by you know getting your muscles warm and getting your your heart rate up a little bit. This is what the actual personal training certification courses would actually say about a warm up. So the goal is to kind of you know reduce risk of injury, and studies support that proper warming up uh, might actually do that a little bit. Now priming is different because priming is much more targeted, and the goal of priming is to improve your performance. Uh, the very least that you'll get is reduced risk of injury, but priming goes above and beyond that because it improves performance. And what you're doing with priming is you're trying to turn muscles on so they fire better. Mm. Um, and this is here's the part that's important, specific from person to person. So I'll mm -hmm. give you a couple examples of what I mean. Let's say you have ankle mobility issues. So when you squat and you go down low, your feet cave in or your heels want to come up or you bend way far forward because your ankles just you, – it's, it's like if you elevate your heels, you could squat better. You might be one of those people, right? You could put like a, a two-by-four or – a couple of plates under your heels, and all of a sudden you you feel like you could squat better. Mm -hmm. That person would prime their ankles with uh, like a combat stretch is a great one. You can find that on our YouTube channel. This the way you would prime that is you get into this stretch position, but then when you're there, you're activating the muscles that maintain that position. You're trying to you're trying to connect to that new range of motion. For that person, that would improve their squat. But let's say you're another person. You've got good ankle mobility, but you have forward shoulder. So when you squat, your shoulders want to round forward, which you know compromises your form. Well, that person would prime differently. Mm -hmm. They would do like a band row 
um, to to activate the mid back muscles so that they could maintain better posture, uh, you know, throughout the whole. Squat. Well, I think that's the best way to kind of use a priming is really to be able to set your body and stack your your, your spine and everything so your uh, so that way your posture is set up correctly so that way your joints don't take you know a, a lot of the brunt of the force uh, and and create problems for yourself. And so you know, even for me as an example, like I, I tend to uh, take a rubber band and I'll do a lot of internal rotation with my knees so that way because I notice a lot of external rotation coming out and my muscles are tight and pulling me outwardly so to be able to then prime ahead of time and kind of get that uh, to stabilize properly and track properly with my knee it really helps a lot to prevent pain and discomfort later well and to continue down the path that Sal was going if you're somebody who squats and you don't ever feel it in your butt or your hamstrings that's something that you would prime before that's why priming is so individualized there is no one size fits all or everybody should prime these exercises before doing this movement or these these working these muscles it has everything to do with where your breakdown is or your where you're lacking the most right and that's the i this was the idea of when we created maps prime was Maps Prime is designed to take you through a basic assessment that it, that takes care of looking at the entire body from head to toe, and where you have breakdown are areas that you should be priming. Even if you're doing legs, like Sal was saying, you may be priming upper body if you if your limiting factor of performing a good squat is because you have such rounded forward shoulders that you're you're excessively leaning over in a squat filling it all in your quads and your knees or filling it in your low back because you're leaning over so much then a lot of your priming even for leg day is actually upper body type stuff so but the idea is that you figure this out like and and if you haven't gone to doug what's the what was justin's prime webinar what's the what's the link for that mapsprimewebinar.com so mapsprimewebinar.com go to that url it's free watch that and and go through that process with him, and then if if and if you're somebody who knows that you need this or want this, that's why we created that program. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll give you some general. Now that we've made the case that it needs to be individualized, I'll give you some general priming movements that seem to work with a lot of people for squats. So this might not be you, uh, but it, this works for a lot of people, right? So ninety ninety. Uh, is a typically a decent primer for most people for squatting. Now, again, you're not holding a stretch when you prime. In 90-90, you're not just trying to get a stretch. What you're trying to do is you're getting in position, and then you're trying to activate the muscles and lift the back leg up or lift the front leg up. So you got to actually activate. That's what priming is. So 90-90, combat stretch is a good one. Um, handcuffs with rotation might be a good one for the upper back or some mm -hmm. kind of a band row. Uh, for for the posture of the upper back, those are generally those three are generally the 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 better ones for for you know most people I would say. So you can look into those if you don't want to go and test yourself, which I think is dumb. You should go through a test, but if you're like, nah, I just want to try these movements and see what happens. Ninety ninety combat stretch, handcuff with rotation. Uh, you know those three generally speaking are good for a lot of people. Next question is from Basic White Girl. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I didn't even pick up on the oh, name. I like that. <laughs> People like Ben Greenfield argue that diets high in glycemic variability are quite detrimental when it comes to burning body fat. What are your thoughts on this? Is it valid or just splitting hairs? I'm glad you picked this, Sal. This is a really this is a really good conversation, and we have friends like Ben Greenfield and Lane Norton who are like on, opposed, yeah, vehemently uh, opposed. Yes, yeah. on this, and the the truth is, they're both right. Yeah. And that I think that's the instead of jumping in a camp on one or the other, and you know, you, you know, getting on board with all Lane on this, or getting on board with Ben, and like it's the end all be all. There, there, there's something that you need to understand that when when you talk about something like this, and this is kind of like how Mind Pump talks, right? When we talk, we're always thinking of the general population and the behaviors of most people, yeah. and in that context, I think what Ben says has a lot of validity. I really do, I, you know, because most people eat this way. Most people do not track their calories and live in a caloric deficit most of the time, which is where you'll hear the argument from Lane's side. Lane will be like, listen, if all if if you're in a calorie deficit, all things are equal, testing a group of people out, then none of this shit matters. Eat sugar, have high glycemic foods. If you're 300 calories lower than your maintenance every single day, none of that matters. You're completely fine. And that's true. But the, the reality is, who the fuck does that all the time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, that's the big thing here. You have to 
okay, you can't just look at uh, diet from a mechanistic point of view, which is the whole you're in a calorie deficit, uh, you hit your macros, it doesn't matter if it's high glycemic and low glycemic. Yes, that's true, but you can't look at diet that way because because that's not the reality of real life. You know, one of the benefits I would say or advantages of being a personal trainer for 20 years, training lots of everyday people, is you don't you get to see the mechanistic stuff, but you also get to see how that affects long term behaviors, how people act. And here's the truth: high glycemic index carbohydrates tend to make people feel crappy and want to eat more. Okay, so. Yeah, if you're a robot and you just plug in the the program and that's it, you're you're probably going to be. It really doesn't matter then too much between gly, high glycemic and low glycemic. Maybe over a long period of time, you can argue it might be more inflammatory and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of true, I guess. But you you still can't really apply that to a person because a person, look, how many people listening right now eat uh, based a hundred percent on the numbers and have no feelings around food. Nobody, unless you're a, a freak or unless you're dysfunctional. Or unless you're a competitor, which is who Lane tends to speak to most of the time. And, mm-hmm. and, and here, and this is where I'm going to defend both these guys here, is that uh, in the defense of Lane on in, in a topic like this, um, when I was competing, I, I had Pop-Tarts in there. I had a donut in there. I had high sugar drinks, high all high glycemic type foods intermittently in the entire time I prepped and I had this amazing physique that hit stage all the time. But I also was weighing, measuring, tracking every single thing I did. And I knew where I could insert those and get away with that. Then I've also had clients who literally all life told them is I eliminated all the high glycemic foods and switched them over to low glycemic foods. And they saw tremendous results. And that was just because really what I did is I it, it ended up reducing their calories, mm-hmm. reducing their appetite to Sal's point, mm-hmm. and it was very simple for them. I just said, hey, listen, stop having all these high glycemic foods. Switch to things like sweet potatoes and yams and you know having foods that are lower glycemic. It makes them eat less. Yes. Yeah. They just naturally make those. And those foods, too, you could eat a lot more sweet potato than you can get away with potato chips, the things like that. You end up filling up on satiates you doesn't increase the appetite and make you want more. So you know, in Ben in Ben's defense, I've literally trained clients where that's all I tell them is I look at their diet. I see they they tend to gravitate towards all these high glycemic foods and I and and, and carbohydrates. And I go, okay, I want to switch you over to the, here's your carb choices. That's all I'm going to adjust. Everything else, I like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Just get rid of all these carbs. I don't like you eating those. And I'm going to switch you over to these low glycemic carbs. And boom. They lose all these weight, the lower inflammation, they feel better than they've ever felt before, and they think it has something to do with just the glycemic foods. Here, there's here, more. Here's like here's the I'll give you an example, right? If you had groups of people and we ran a test and it was a long term test, and one group of people they they focused on and pushed the 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 mechanistic uh, parts of the diet. Calories, proteins, fats, carbs, they tracked and they went and they made sure they hit their numbers. And the other group we didn't even focus on that at all. All we focused on were behaviors uh, associated with food, why they ate, uh, if they ate when they were stressed, foods that helped them eat less, maybe avoiding hyperpalatable foods, avoiding uh, you know uh, high glycemic index carbohydrates, you know uh, finding ways to cope with stress and stuff that don't involve food. So on one end we have be- all behavior, on the other hand we have all mechanism. Okay, in the short run. The macro counting mechanistic people are going to do better. They're going to do better. In the long term, the behavior modifications are going to do far better. That's why you got to know both. You got to know both. It's important to understand the proteins, fats, carbs, and calories, but you need to focus on the behaviors or you're never going to have long term success. You're just going to go up and down all the time. And here's the thing with high glycemic index carbohydrates they tend to make people hungrier and they tend to make people feel like crap. And if you feel like crap and you're hungrier, good luck trying to maintain a relatively healthy, lean physique long term. It's going to be very difficult. You'll be struggling for the rest of your life if you do it that way. So 100%, they're both right. They both have value. Understand both if you want to succeed. Next question is from Jordan Harris. You speak on the importance of periodization and proper phasing of workouts found in your MAPS programs. How about the phasing or periodization of endurance-based workouts such as running, swimming, biking, Mm. etc., and the proper programming of resistance training if it's alongside endurance training for the endurance-based athlete? Should there be any program changes if I were to run MAPS Anabolic or Performance 
alongside my endurance sport. Another good well, question. Well, yeah, so that's going to be your priority, right? The endurance is obviously at the top of your pile. So now you're going to kind of adjust things to kind of uh, fit into that as being the the skill and the attribute that you value the most. And mm. so, you know, in terms of the actual strength training, that's going to reduce a bit, yeah. in, in my opinion. Well, we, yeah, we, totally. created, we created the MAPS programs with the uh, overall, like, fitness goals, uh, aesthetic goals, uh, functional goals in mind. When you start getting into an endurance athlete, that's a very goal-specific type of program. And just like Justin said, you're going to prioritize that. If you're an endurance athlete, I'm focused on your endurance training first, and then I want your 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 weight training program to complement that, mm -hmm. which is not what we wrote. Like We wrote programs that were really geared towards somebody who's trying to change body composition, improve mobility, build strength, very overall health general purpose for the for the masses. Then when you have someone like this, who, and I, I got a DM, it might even be the same person who asked this very, very similar question. It's like, listen, if you're an endurance sport, that's priority one. Then I'm going to use MAPS Anabolic or Performance to complement that. So you're, you're going you're gonna to set your, your endurance goals based on that, which is completely different Okay, so for those that are listening right now that are wondering about cardio, for somebody who's wanting to do cardio for the the, the sole benefits of losing body fat, right? They're mm -hmm. different, so right. you have to understand that. Yeah, yeah. So I've trained a lot of uh, endurance based uh, clients. So I've had clients that are triathletes or competitive swimmers or marathon runners. They love their sport. I never would, you know, try to talk someone out of doing something that they love, mm -hmm. um, unless it was damaging them. But these people were very healthy about it. Um, you know, very good people. Again, I've trained a lot of them, hundreds uh, at least. And um, the way you train them with resistance training is to support what they're doing. The more endurance training you're doing, the less resistance training your body's going to be able to tolerate. So most of these people, I would train them, typically, no joke, around once a week with resistance training. No uh -huh. joke. And I'm talking yeah. about people who are really endurance uh, training focused. So like, I'll give you an example. I had one, one client that was a triathlete, loved competing um, you know, in, in, in those types of events. So they would either run, swim, or bike most days. So once a week, they would come into the gym and I would do probably 20 minutes of mobility work and another 30 minutes of traditional compound lift uh, resistance training. I would keep the intensity moderate. If I push them too hard with intensity, I would take away from their, their endurance training, which was their focus. The goal really was to minimize injury mm -hmm. and give them some strength to support. Because here's the thing with strength. This is the wonderful thing about strength. It is the foundation of all other physical pursuits. So if you make an endurance athlete a little bit stronger, they get more endurance. Well, and so that's what kind of my, what my yeah. training would. Serve. And to that point too, like I would take that time to really assess like uh, where the focus should be, like in the posterior chain, for instance. Uh, you know, with, with runners, yes. you know, and and with endurance athletes was a very uh, big priority of mine to help to strengthen. So that way, you know, it provides that that way for them to like decelerate to to be able to have the strength to uh, control their body yep. better and support their joints so everything is about supporting their joints in, in their movement pursuits uh and and also alongside with that like mobility practices to to make sure you're greasing the groove that's what i would that's the one thing i would do more than once a week right strength training I'm, i might be only strength training one maybe tops two times mobility a week. every day mobility i'm doing on a very regular basis i mean that's going to complement and support what they're doing with their endurance sport so that like and so if you have, if you own performance, I'm assuming this person does because they brought it up. I would be, I would be living in those maps performance uh, or mobility days as your primary focus, and then like the one of the strength training days, full body strength training days, and then the rest is really geared around your endurance training because that's your priority. Yeah, do yeah. one a week because yeah. in there you have three resistance training workouts a week. Do one. And, and make sure the intensity is moderate mm -hmm. and then do lots of uh, mobility. But, you know, at, Justin brought up a good point um, about individualizing it for the sport. Like runners, you know, I've trained a few competitive runners. And one thing you don't want to do with a runner is make their upper body really muscular because it's just more weight um, that will take away from their performance. So we didn't train on getting their upper body super muscular. But I did train their upper body to give them good posture. Mm -hmm. So I'd work a lot on their on making sure they don't get forward shoulder. 
I would work a lot on their core. It helped them a lot with their running mechanics because they're, here's what happens with, with competitive runners. As their posture starts to break down, so does their, it start, they start to become less efficient with their running and it takes away from their performance. And then with their legs, I was making sure the legs stayed strong through full ranges of motion. One of the things about running is you work in such a short range of motion. So we would work on being able to do full squats and split stance type lunges. Yeah, I like a lot of unilateral yeah. work for and somebody who's a runner. A lot of them. And then yeah. I would do things like tibialis raises to, to help prevent things like shin splints and stuff like that. Now, as far as phasing or periodizing your endurance-based workouts, so you may be focused on one type of endurance sport, but studies have shown that if you do a little bit of other types of endurance sports, it actually might it helps prevent injury. So if you're a runner, running is great. You might benefit from doing a little bit of cycling and a little bit of swimming on top of it. Uh, studies show that that helps reduce overuse. So in other words, you know, let's say you run five days a week. Um, maybe that one of those days you do a short run and then do a little bit of swimming uh, or cycling, something to kind of offset a little bit, then do your strength training and you're totally set. But what you don't want to do is this. If you're endurance focused, don't you can't be like you can't have gr push endurance and strength at the same time. You'll get neither. Right. Yeah. So it's one or the other. So if you're endurance focused, the strength training is there to support it. It's not there to be the dominant thing because otherwise you're just going to overdo it. Next question is from John Alva Seven. To build the business of Mind Pump, were there any hard compromises you as a team had to make? If so, what was the hardest to do for the better of the business? Oh yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah, lots we'll, of compromises. I had to like, we, we had to know Justin was going to eat all the cheese in the studio. <laughs> yeah, it was like that's <laughs> mine. No, that's not. You know, um, this is a tough question because I don't know if we've had any hard compromises. I think they've all been pretty easy. Mm -hmm. There's definitely compromises, but they're not hard. We have to fight. You know, I had to fight or argue right. over them. But I think uh, you know, recognizing that it's. You, you can't do everything and that other people are, are better suited for other things in the business. I think that's an important thing to understand for all partners. Mm -hmm. And I know we're pretty good about that. I don't know if that was a hard compromise. It was a hard compromise at first. There was growing pains where we went through letting go stuff. Doug mm -hmm. still struggles with it today. Mm -hmm. I think that we all we all tend to, and we did a lot, uh, I think, at the very beginning. Uh, we wanted to do everything together. Mm -hmm. we, all, yeah. we all got together. We all liked each other so much, and we all respected each other as leaders themselves. And so every decision made in the business – we felt the need that, you know, you want to bring your partners in and out. They need to make that decision with you. And uh, I think everybody was a little reluctant to just take charge of an area and just make the decision for the company. And so uh, we we probably had, a, I would say, about a six month to a year there where we, we kind of were stagnant because we were not allowing each other to kind of disperse and get things done and just not worry about trying to bring involve everybody with every decision. So there was some growing pains there. Um, I had to compromise. I felt a little bit at the beginning, but I look back now and I think it was the, one of the best things that ever that happened to me was I struggled with not having kids at the beginning and uh, the this like nine to two schedule that we had like structured so the guys could be be home with their kids and do the things that were very, very important to them, which was family. And I was in like, let's scale this thing mode and let's spend the night and park our tents out at the studio and not leave until mm -hmm. it's at a certain level. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to, and which it wasn't necessary for us to do that, but it was, it was something that I was used to because I'm not an organized person. So my way of success in the past was just get after it, just be so focused on it that that's all you think about 24 seven and you'll, you'll eventually get all the things you need to get done. But what it really forced me to do was become better organized, better uh, efficient with my time that we had this time together that I had to, to get it done. And, and then now looking back, now that I have a son, uh, it was the best thing that we ever did because I value that time the same way that these guys value that time. And so it felt like a compromise and a struggle for me uh, early on, but because we got through it and figured it out, it was one of the best things that we ever did. Yeah. You know, the reason why I have a tough time with it, saying hard compromise, I think like hard compromise would be all of us like, no, it's got to be this way. No, it's got to be that. Yeah. Somebody's still like salty about it today. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody is. No, I, 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 I didn't, you know, that didn't seem like it was a hard compromise because you didn't like, you wasn't like something that you were yelling and, and mad about. You, yeah. you know, we, we all, and that's probably because we're older, I would say. I could imagine if we were younger 
and we started Mind Pump. Mm-hmm. This this would have been a, a boy. This would have been. I don't. I mean, I'm, I still think we would have worked through it, but I, I think there probably would have been a, a one or two fist fights, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> something would. like that. You know, throwing something. But, yeah. um, but now I mean, the hardest had to have been the dividing and conquering. Like probably, I, I can agree. With I that. really only think in the last year. So we're we're Mind Pump is five and a half years old now, right? And it's only been maybe a year, year and a half tops. I would say we really have all kind of fallen into. Our, when we built this, we didn't have we didn't sit down and have this like you're this position, you're that position. These are your job titles, and probably an, a CEO outside looking in would think that it was going to fall apart for those reasons because we didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we let it na- we la- we allowed the natural growth and allowed everyone to kind of naturally fall into uh, their strengths, and it ended up working out. But there was uh, there was that at the beginning. I think there was that. Uh, you know, oh, Sal can just go handle that and he'll make the decision for us and I'm not going to question it. I don't. I would trust him to do that. Justin, same thing, mm-hmm. Doug and myself. But at the beginning, we had this thing where it was like every guy- It was a council. Yeah. yeah every, every, we, we, oh my God. I remember those days like vividly where we'd bring something in and then we'd have this round robin discussion. It would be hours long and heated back and forth, back and forth. And then it would just be like, it would stall yes. whatever that was that we were trying to actually yeah. do. All right, we'll get the blue dumbbells. You yeah, know, exactly. something like that. It was just so stupid. Yeah. Uh, but you know, at the same time, we valued everybody's opinion. So it was like, I did want to bring it to the group. Everybody had that sense, you know? And that's a real, believe it or not, I mean, we're, we're acting like we're downplaying how much of a compromise that is, but that takes a lot of, I don't know if that would have been able to, if we would have been able to do that in our twenties and that takes a lot of trust in your partners totally. to, to be able to just walk away from your, you know, this is everybody's baby here, right? There's four of us that created this from nothing. It's everyone's child. So to think that there's a part of raising this child that the other three guys has like got to a point where they're just like, oh yeah, Adam, you go ahead and make the decision for how the kid is going to learn this. Or right. Sal, you go ahead and decide what is his moral fabric is going to be around. Right. Oh, Justin, you go ahead and decide what sports he's into. Or I mean, literally that's what we've done with this business. And that's a big compromise yeah. to allow each other to do that. And I we worked our way through it, I think, really nice. And it didn't take that long to do it but it was it was a struggle at the beginning i yeah, think yeah yeah and you know there's been there's been times when we've thought about whether or not we should express a particular opinion or we mm-hmm. should you know talk about a particular thing you know and at the end of the day the one thing i think we've never had to compromise on is these these core values and one of them is just maintaining our integrity at all costs mm-hmm. meaning okay if 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 we believe something and we say it and we're against everybody else. This was early days of Mind Pump. Not, not so much now, but early days, there was a lot of stuff we said that uh, that wasn't widely accepted in the fitness space, uh, for example. Um, and it was risky. It was risky to come out and say, no, that's all wrong. That's all bullshit. Here's the deal. We were, no, we were nobodies when we first came out. Uh, but we're, one thing that we don't compromise is we're willing to, to take it all down if we have to. We're not going to compromise on, on you know, what we believe to be true. And I think that's another, I think that's what makes the other compromises possible. You know, if we didn't have a core, like, like there's certain things that I know where you guys, what you guys would do. And I know you guys uh, value, for example, integrity as one of those top things that makes other compromises easy because there's a solid base. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? True. And I think that's an important thing to have. All uh, about that base. All about that base. Yeah. Uh, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Uh, what's up, YouTube? Check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can even find Doug. You can find all his uh, hot and sexy pictures at Mind Pump Doug on Instagram. (laughs) Get sunlight uh, during the day. Now, someone might say, what does that have to do with going to sleep? Well, you have a circadian rhythm, and part of that rhythm is also letting your body know that the sun is out, that I'm awake. In fact, we've all experienced this. You have a day outside. You didn't have to do much. You're just out in the sun. You sleep like a baby mm-hmm. that night. We've all.